right, Joss? How you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Good, um, good. Here we are at Stanick Lakes again. Yeah. Um, just wanted to do a little bit of a chat with you, really, mate, just so that the people watching this can get more of a handle about who you are, um, what what sort of fishing you do. I know we're talking about carp fishing, but, but within that, there's lots of different um, uh, you know threads, if you like. And also, you know, we won't go into too much detail, but I want to talk to you about your involvement um, on the otter issue, shall the we say. The otter predation yeah, issue. Yeah. yeah. So, but first of all, tell, tell us a little bit about your own fishing at the moment and, and historically. I know you do quite a bit in France now, don't you, as well? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't do as much as I, as I, as I probably used to. Um, I've fished in France for a long, long time. Fish here in France as mm. well, you know, uh, in, in the past. I, I go once a year, sometimes twice a year. Um, I found a lake which I've completely and fell in love with. Um, and I've been there for the last 10 or 11 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, Where's that? Marpesh. Marpesh. Um, yeah. And I've just started to fish those sister bushes across the road with the labyrinth. Oh, okay. Uh, Marpesh has been very kind to me, but very right. bad to me in the right. same turn. I had six years of blank into that. I figured it out a little bit more and I've mm. done very, very well there, you know, in the last three or four years. Um, fancy new challenge. Yep. Went to the labyrinth, labyrinth this year. Fell in love with that, and I'm sure I'm Brilliant. going to be uh, go there for many, many years to come. So, Absolutely. love my French trips. It's great to go away with some like minded people and meet and some of the lads I don't see from week to week I go you know once a year we meet up and we have a brilliant time okay, you know? nice. I love that so it's a proper social thing as well isn't it yeah, yeah. social but I mean I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm quite anal when I go to France I, I won't go to shops I don't do I'm right. social with people near me not that yeah. I'm anti-social but when I'm fish. fishing I'm fishing well, with somewhere like Marpesh, you've got some very big carp there. You can't yeah. do it half-heartedly, can you? You've got no, to give it to there's, it, a, there's a couple of eighties in there. There's one Barbie Joe well-known, yeah. which I had at 84 the other year. There's another one knocking around the 81 mark, which I've had at 70-odd. Right. Um, I've had some of the other big fish as well. And Brilliant. Yeah, I love it. It's a proper buzz. Proper big carp yeah, fishing, but the yeah. other side of the channel. Yeah, it's great. great what about your fishing in the UK? Are you doing much? Uh, not, not as much. I, I used to fish two or three times a week, mm. uh, two or three nights a week, religiously. Yeah, no, I remember you ago. were heavily into it, weren't you? Yeah, proper into it. And then life changes. I've got a little lad now who's mm. now nine. Um, I love spending time with him. I like taking him roach fishing, as we've just been yeah, talking about, yeah. and teaching him angling, not carp brilliant. fishing. Yeah, brilliant. If he wants to go on to be a carp angler, great, I'll be with him all the way. Mm. But there's something special about sitting next to your lad little red float, and he's just completely fixated, away from iPhones and iPads and all that rubbish, mm. and fish for three or four hours. I'm very lucky where I live. Um, we recently moved to, uh, to a very nice place with a big reservoir down the bottom, so right. it's a walk down the field and uh, fish for okay. two or three hours and yeah, go back home, so I'm very sport. Well, One thing that I, that I admire about you is that as important as fishing is to you, it's part of your life, it's not your life. In, in, you yeah. know, in that you, I know you race motorbikes. Yeah, you know, you've got your family. Yeah. you know, you work hard. Yeah, and fishing's just an element. It's not. You've never allowed it to really overtake. You know, no, your being. I, th I think fishing's given given me personally so much over the years. I've got so much out of it, and I like to try and give something back. Um, whether it be taking me lad fishing, I'm gonna run, run my own lake now with a group mm. of other people. I hardly ever fish it once twice a year, but we've spent. Hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of pounds redoing it and fencing mm. it, which we'll probably get on to yeah, in a while. Indeed, yeah. Stocking it, nurturing it, and yet I get more pleasure out of seeing people with a fish than I do sure. catching it. So yeah. I, and I love it, you know. It's it's, nice but I also like to, when I go fishing, give it everything I can. But I don't have to catch every time. It doesn't particularly bother me. But that maximum effort thing, that I think that comes from the fact that you don't go every single day. Yeah. I don't fish every day. You no. know, all, all my mates will tell you I don't fish fair. anywhere near yeah. as much as maybe I should do. But when I go, I'm that much more interested yeah. in what I'm doing because yeah. it might have been a week, two weeks sometimes, three yeah. weeks, a month, whatever. Yeah. You know. I, like, last year, I, I mean, when I took up motorbike racing and, and, and track track days, I. I didn't fish for three or four mm. months and you know it was a new buzz being on a motorbike very different buzz to catching mm. a big fish or Absolutely. any fish yeah. you know you're trying to stay still alive still a buzz though yeah yeah still a buzz you yeah. know and you get off yeah the danger of failure is slightly different isn't I it I mean just you know I fell off in bed chair it didn't hurt quite so much <laughs> <laughs> but you still oh, go brilliant. back to angling it, it's it's like part of me and it will never yeah. go away brilliant. even if I give it a rest for a while it will never go away sure so. okay so um just tell me a bit about your your role within Anglia now, because I know you're heavily involved, aren't you, with with one or two organisations? Yeah. Um, and you know, inevitably, it, it, it's the otter threat that we're talking about, um, which, depending on which magazine or that you read or video you watch, either isn't a problem or is going to end carp fishing next week. 
You know, where, where are we actually at with it, Josh? I think you're bang on in the extremities of like, you know, otters are going to finish the whole fishing world, mm. and you know, uh, it is a massively, massively contentious issue. Mm. Otters, they're here to stay. Anglers here to stay. Yeah. Um, it's not just about carp fishing. It does it does great me a little bit? Like you know, when you see everybody bangs about otters are going to eat carp, it's a lot bigger picture than just. Oh, got oh some of my friends barb, are barb langers, and they're, they're, you know, oh, the last three or four years, some of their fishing has just been yeah, it's just gone. Yeah, um, and you can't really protect the rivers. No, you but, can't. You know, we can protect a, can a still water with yeah. some investment and some yeah. knowledge, obviously. If you but can. to know again, you're involved in. Yeah. But you can't protect the rivers. No, you know? I mean, I, I got involved with oxidation through my own lake, mm. and it was something I stumbled on. It wasn't something I decided to go and do. Okay. Um, my lake, I run dug in the early 90, late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, fish were stocked in the mid 60s, mm. so they're very old fish. Mm. Um, started to notice they'd be predated upon. I hadn't got a clue what it was, right. but there was dead fish. One or two a month, you know, and mm. it's just what happens, isn't it? You know, maybe a fox has had it, but then it started to become a bit of a pattern. Right. And soon figured out what it was. Never saw it, but I soon sort of got the inkling it was mm. an otter. Started to put trail cameras around the, the lake, Saw them on trail cameras, done what everybody else does on Facebook. Mm. Kill them all, shoot them all, otters are this, otters are that, you know. And okay, they, they, they are a massive problem to, to fish in. It wasn't fenced. Um, managed to fence it after two and a half, three years of mm. persistently bugging the landowner. Right. Um, got that done. Because that can be a big issue sometimes. Massive. But, massive. I mean, there's a lake that I've got a ticket on. It's an irrigation pool for yep. the, you know, where I live. Yep. Lots of potato farms and whatnot. Yep. There's no way he wants a fence around that yeah. lake because to that farmer, that water is important to him in yeah. the summer and needs access to it. But yeah. for the anglers, it's, an absolute you know, it's a ticking time bomb. It really, is, yeah. It? I mean, if, if your lake's not fenced, you will get predated mm. on at some point. I'm not saying to what amount you'll get predated yeah, sure. on. But because I got that interested in, in otter predation, I didn't want to be one of the Facebook kill and shoot them sort of thing. I wanted right. to learn about them. I wanted to understand right. what, what we'd done as angling to increase otter sure. numbers. Now, everybody goes on about otter numbers, they've released thousands, they haven't released thousands. There was mistakes happened, there should have been impact service mm. done before they were released, there wasn't, that's historical. Right. That was 20, 30 Can't years Can't do anything ago. about that now, no. though, can we? it's what we can mm. do in the future. I was then invited by Rob Hughes onto the PAG, which I remember sitting on the PAG with, with all the guys. Thinking, and that's the Predator, predation, uh, predation, uh, predation Action, action Group, group. I said. I was thinking, well, what can I possibly give to this? You know, I'm not known anger, I'm just some bloke who goes fishing, you know. And um, I learned and I learned and learned about it, become really more involved with the PAG. And then, through Facebook, strangely enough, I had a bit of an argument, friendly one, um, with a chap who owns the UK World Off Trust. Um, got very friendly with him, invited him to a challenge about my lake. Right. Can't be an otter. It is an otter. It's not an otter. Come and have a look, then. Okay. Come and, come and prove me right or wrong. Came away from Devon. Had a look at my lake. We got otters. I didn't know what sprints were, slide marks were, different yep. signs apart from a dead fish was. And he educated me. It helped me a hell of a lot on the signs before it actually happened. Mm. So moving forward some years, I was invited on to become a uh, fisheries advisor of the UK Water Trust. We're now right. completely voluntary, don't get paid for it, don't do nothing. Um, someone will phone us up, have an issue with an otter, or think they've got an issue with an otter. Mm. We're going to have a look at their either their fences or advise them on how to fence, designs of fencing, and hopefully we can help save some still waters. Right. Um, it doesn't stop the issue of them, um, once it's fenced, I'm all right, Jack, my, my lake's all right bloke next door is going to have it. Yeah. You can only do so much at so much at yeah, one Yeah, you can time. only protect your own thing, can't you? You can yeah. only protect what you've got some control yeah. over, I guess. And there is going to be some evolution in what we're trying to achieve in the otters. They're here, we've got to live with them. Mm. It's how we educate ourselves to live with them, mm. which is going to be the key to angling. I feel desperately sorry, and I've said it on numerous occasions, for lakes that can't defence for whatever reason, yeah. might be it cost, be it land ownership, be mm. it whatever. I feel horrendously sorry for rivers and canals. There is a balance between what we've got in the canals and rivers now mm. 
not being sustainable enough for a predator so they're having to move on to lakes such as Stanick. Of course. But well, this is fenced on lake. But yeah, fortunately where we are at Stanick, it's fully fenced, yeah, isn't it? And, and they've they, done they a had the foresight to do that. They've had the foresight, they've done it themselves, yeah. they've you know they've put a lot of investment in and brought I actually fish their syndicate lake down the road as well. Yeah, and, Kismet, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I've said for a while yeah. I would not entertain now joining a lake that wasn't fenced. Um, and I had the chance to join a, a, a very, very nice lake. Um, you know, through a, a few strokes of, of luck, um, fortune, I got myself up the list, so to yep. speak. Yeah. And it was a lovely place with some fantastic carp, but no fencing. No. So I had to think long and hard because, you know, without sort of scaremongering, you don't know how long you've got on there, yeah, do you? It's so, a t- it, you're right, it's taking time bomb and, 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 otter, and otter, otters have spread across the new counties of mm. the country, without fact they are. Um, there needs to be an impact survey. Mm. There needs to be a numbers game. Uh, how it's going to be done is, is, is probably today is virtually impossible. Mm. It's be sprayed samples, needs to be DNA'd. But one sprayed in one county will be counted historically. Right. right. It's, otters have a, a, a humongous radius to go to. Yeah. 40 to 60, 60, 70 kilometres. So it could have sprayed there and sprayed there. Same, it's to be counted the same, same so yeah, you can accelerate that. Yeah. So it is very difficult. Um, and again, historically, this should have been done 20, 30 years ago. Mm. It wasn't. So we've now got to try and educate ourselves on how to run our fisheries, living with otters. I think that's a key word there as well is is education. Yeah. Because, as you say, you go on Facebook, for example, yeah. and they're all they're, Facebook's full of experts for a start. And you might get one guy on there going, yeah, if you see an otter, kill it, da da da, da. You go to prison for that. Yeah, six months. You? So actually, it's, it's, not, the answer. it's not the answer. No, it's not. No. Um, but because this expert said it on Facebook, and somebody listened to it, you know, some someone somewhere down the line is going to get into a lot of trouble for yeah, that. Yeah, and, and so don't, it's not the answer, is don't it? get me wrong. Uh, you know, you, you're fishing and you take, take more like, and everybody else is like who, who, who they own it. You'll have an otter come in, they'll take a 20, 30, 40 pound fish, and you're emotionally attached to that. Of course, you are. You've Absolutely. seen those fish grow up, and we, we name yeah. them, don't we? Yep. We've seen them grow to this, to this. So you're emotionally attached to mm. them. So I understand why people say, shoot them, get rid of them, they're a pest, they're this, they're that. We can't go about doing it that way. It's illegal. Yeah. Six months, ten grand, even even or both. Yeah. Um, we have now managed to get a, a trapping license through through uh, Natural England. Mm. And I've said it a million times. It's not the answer, but it does give fisheries an insurance policy if they are fenced. Sure. And at least there's some recognition there that there is a problem. Yes. Because yeah. until recently, there's been, you know, there's been nothing but disdain towards yeah. angling really from from the, the higher beings, if you like. Angling is not that important to them, so it's not been such an issue. Has yeah, it? I mean, I mean, when we first encroached on the journey with Natural England to try and get the otter otter trapping license, it was a flat no. Mm. No way you grab it. It's never going to happen. Can't touch them. They've got more protection than any other animal in mm. the country. We spent 12, 18 months, uh, myself, Dave Webb, Mark Walton and some other key people. Angling Trust are involved. We are now licensed trappers to help fisheries remove legally a problematic offer. Mm. And ju- just, just in a nutshell, just in layman's terms, what are you actually allowed to do on that licence, Joss? Because again, there'll be lots of people who don't quite understand it and they'll say, oh yeah, there's a licence now, you can kill them, or there's a licence, you can trap yeah. them, or what, what's the actual truth? So in, in terms of complete simplicity, if uh, your lake has got an otter trapped within a fence line, mm. you make contact with, you know me personally, so it's easy, but you make contact with UK Wilds Trust, yeah. report that you've got an otter within your fence line, it's not going to leave. No. Can't UK Wild Otter Trust will then contact one of the officers. There aren't many of us, so it's, it's our work at the moment to, to cover it. Mm. We will come out and inspect your water. We will make sure that the otter can get out if, if the problem's there. You've left a gate open, the, the, the gaps in the fence are too mm. wide. But my job or our job is to advise you on how that otter's probably got it. We can then lay an otter specific otter trap. Mm. You can't buy them. We've had them specially made, they're right. a certain sort of specification, so you can't buy them off the shelf. So they're made specifically for an otter. The otters are a big animal. We then lay the traps and then we monitor them over a period of time. So when the trap door shuts, we get a signal on the mm. mobile phone. We can then go and inspect, see what it is. If it's a trapped otter, we then remove the otter in the trap to the other side of the fence and release it. Right. Now that's, that's the key, isn't it? And that's the key. That's the contentious key. Because yeah. what they're saying now is we're not helping because we're moving an otter on. Mm. I 
I, I, I get, understand where they're coming from because we're taking our trout, putting it back into the wild where it should be, um, and it's going to go and do it somewhere mm. else. No different to fencing. You fence a lake, you stop an otter coming well, in. That's the barrier to otter, so he's only going to go to the next lake anyway. Regardless. Yeah. So yeah. we can't we can't trap it and kill it. Mm. We, we're not allowed to. So in a nutshell, we trap it. We release it outside the fence. We advise you how to shore up your defences mm. the best way possible, and it's up to you as a fishery to fix those. Cool. So it's an insurance policy basically, sure. so that if you have got a problem in here, you've got a legal means of removing an otter. Oh, oh that's on the fish. It's this one. Oh, this one. <laughs> um, you've got a legal way of removing an otter without running the risk of getting caught. Without <laughs> you've definitely got it. <laughs> without risk of getting caught, without going to prison or having a huge fine, and also the first person who gets caught killing or damaging otter is probably going to make national headlines. That's yeah, not which good is not going to be good for fishing, absolutely exactly. not. No, it's not good for fishing. That's brilliant, mate. It's a real insight, Top you know, mate. from a personal point of view, but for people watching. Lovely, thank and you. hopefully we've given a little bit of clarity to, to where we're at with the otter thing. Yeah. And Hopefully, fingers crossed, where we're going with it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, in, you know, as we progress in our journey with, with this, between otter and angling, um, it's always going to be difficult because you've got to get two, two mm. very passionate people on side of both sides of the fence. We are going to involve. There are things that are going to change within the next two, three, four years. I couldn't say what because I don't know, but we are only going to get stronger. We're going to learn more about fisheries. We're going to learn more about otters now to protect them. So mm. it's, it's not that we've, we've got a fence, we've got a trap, that's it. Nothing else is going to move forward. There are things in place, we're trying to put in place to make them move forward, to make Brilliant. it better for both otters and Excellent. Well, good luck with that, mate. Thank for you, all mate. of our benefits, Thank you, Alex. Thank Thanks you. so much, Josh. Top Cheers. Man. Thank Thanks. you.